On today's show, more news about Tesla's next generation battery, Mercedes, they get truly serious, maybe, about EVs, and well, that and a little bit more. My name's Chris, let's get into this. And... Welcome, I do hope you're well and staying safe. So no matter where you are, be well and be kind. All right, today I'm gonna to mix it up a bit and we're gonna kick off the show with mail time. And well, on last week's episode, I detailed what the current state of affairs is around like carbon capture use and storage. And well, your responses was truly heartening. Danny wrote, great episode, Chris. Angus Taylor should watch this one. He might learn something. Or are uh, part of donation pockets too full from you know who? Green Grub Wooden Toys Australia writes, good summary, keep up the great work. And Richard, who echoed many other comments with, thank you for the truth. You are an awesome human being to care for the people and the planet. Look, thanks to everyone who has commented so far and look, making this video like this and this and well, and this. I do it because, well, I care about what happens to our world. I'm worried about the, the world that we're leaving our kids. And importantly, I know that there are many examples out there, not only in Australia, but also around the world, about things, people, uh, technology, that's actually making a difference and changing the world we live in. So what I'm trying to do here is inform, educate, make it fun, and getting the information out because goodness knows, there's a lot of negativity out there and I'm trying to lift it up, chime. And it's hard when you're talking about politicians because they tend to bring it down, don't they? But nonetheless, look, thank you for your comments. I really do appreciate it. Now, if you have been enjoying the show so far, please do subscribe whilst you're there. Maybe think about joining us over here on Patreon where you get early access, polls, news, stuff that you just don't get here. And yeah, keep those comments coming. Next up, meet the new vertically aligned carbon nanotube battery. This new design combines the highest ionic conductivity thanks to like a 3D fully accessible nanostructure through its vertical arrangement of 100 billion nanotubes per square centimeter. Now, I just casually throw around a big number like that. So let's put that into context, shall we? If you were to stack these tubes on top of each other, it will be higher than the world's largest building. That's pretty impressive. Now, given that this thing is like a typical battery, only better, this new 3D electrode geometry can solve the vast majority of performance constraints faced by battery makers. They're gonna be able to boost battery power by a factor of 10, energy story, by up to a factor of three and life cycle up to five and we'll reduce in tar charging times down to minutes instead of hours. NAWA's dry electrode technology also brings like significant environmental advantages, being easily recyclable and e eco-disposable at the end of its long life cycle. As a result, NAWA estimates that by using ultra-fast carbon electrode in like a lithium battery cell, the CO2 footprint could be reduced by as much as 60% and well simply because there's less active materials required. That and what potential savings by using less lithium and what this new design is got a great application for EVs. The makers of the battery say that if the technology is applied to an electric vehicle, it could potentially go faster and will further with 1000 kilometer range and that will make this very much commonplace in the market. My viewers in the UK, listen up. Classic motoring manufacturer RBW Electric Cars has revealed the pre-production model of its stylish electric roadster. Inspired by the MT Roadster of the 1960s, the RBW EV Roadster takes the classic sports car design and it will enhance it for modern world. Using a brand new body shell from British Motor Heritage, sits like a patented power drivetrain system that has been in development for three years. An electric motor drives the rear wheels and a battery is under the bonnet, which RBW claims to give like a perfect 50-50 weight distribution. Now, if an MG isn't your cup of tea, that was my really bad English accent, you can actually get the RVW guys to do things like Austin Healy's, Jaguar, E-Type, and even Minis. 
with production starting in early 2021 and prices starting from £90,000 plus taxes. That's at least $162,000. Yikes! Orders have already been taken, so get in fast. Re Automotive, who have detailed previously on this show, have released a video demonstrating the skateboard EV platform running around a race truck in a fashion reminiscent of like an RC racer. Seen here, the reboard enables the EV platform to be completely flat, offering customers the freedom to like place any shape or size of body design on top. Starting with the P1 platform, it can carry up to 1.3 tons and is designed for last mile in a city delivery applications. Then there's the P2 platform, capable of moving 2.5 tons, so perhaps transport passengers and walk cargo. And finally, you've got the P4, offering like up to 4.5 tons, gross weight, carrying capacity. This one's actually been built for the North American delivery segment. Mercedes has revealed its Ambition 2039 plan to provide a CO2 neutral car fleet in less than 20 years from now. How? Well, it's building on its electric modular platform, much like VW's MEB platform, so that the electric version of its popular S-Class saloon will become usable in electric varieties instead. Mercedes claims that its next generation of electric vehicles in the luxury and executive segment will be possible using a custom developed architecture which is scalable in every aspect and what can be used across model series. The wheelbase and track are, as, uh, have all share si similar components but because it's modular they can drop things and take things out and scale up and down as need be. Kicking off in 2021, the EQS, that's not going to be an S-Class EV, will be the first model built on the new electric architecture. The EQE Business Saloon, an SUV variant of the EQS, will follow soon after. Now, he is hoping that Mercedes succeeds at this because, you know, tech and learnings from high-end cars typically filters down to lower-end cars and will make some, you know, lower-end cars more fun to drive and more cheaper for everybody. The Audi e-tron GT will start rolling off production lines at its German plant at the end of 2020. Large areas of the body of the all-electric Gran Turismo are constructed from ultra-high strength steel and aluminium. To produce this material mix in plant quantities, a shop was established that combines like the skilled craftsmanship of the employees as well as fully automated robots to help with it. The inline measuring procedure for the bodies is also new. It guarantees even greater accuracy and can respond very quickly to minute deviations. Once completed, every car is then driven 40 kilometers on public roads, which includes like six, uh, mixed sections of highway and urban traffic. Now, for my awesome Patreons, they got to see another story of this car and how Audi has it designed its unique digital sound for this car. And well, as much as I hate car makers doing this because well, what's wrong with like just hearing the word of an electric motor? Really? Seriously? The video is actually a great demonstration of spatial sound and how it sounds really awesome with your headphones on. Oh my gosh. We've reached over 100 signatures on the uh, petition urging the Australian government to support EV incentives. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sincerely, I really do mean it. So now, question. How are we gonna get this message out there to our politicians that so many Australians actually care about this? Yeah, I'm gonna try and do something big, so I've got a bit of thinking to do. I'll be asking my awesome patrons for their input as well. If you've got an idea, put it down below in the comments and I'll let you know what we do. Because well, at the moment, I've still got the five column restrictions, which are really annoying me, but, I'm hopeful that you know, those, these, these things change in the very near future. But anyway, I'm excited. Well done guys, thanks for your help. Time for upcoming events. And if you're watching this between like October 15 to 27, it's already underway. Renault, they're actually showing the world what its vision of a future electric world is gonna be like. 
titled the E-Ways event, this is like an online forum where they'll be unveiling like two significant new models, the Renault Megane E-Vision, that's like a dynamic compact hatchback for a new generation of electric vehicles, and the Dacia, I think that's how pronounce it, Dacia Spring Electric, a car that looks strangely familiar, because it is, and is because it's been uh, promised by Renault to be the cheapest EV yet. So let's take a look at these cars and see what they're about, shall we? Now, at this moment in time, they're only gonna be available in Europe and there's definitely no word about them coming to Australia. Compliance cars, hmm. The Renault Megane E-Vision is an electric compact hatchback which combines elements of a coupe with an SUV. Built on the company's brand new CMF EV platform, it will pack a lot of hatch in a small form because, well, the engine does, isn't there to take much space, and well, there's no transmission box or you know channel or anything like that. So yeah, it's quite a good looker, I reckon. Next is the Dacia Spring Electric, and this I think will revolutionize the market by like making electric power, like electric vehicles rather, accessible to everyone. With only like a 26.8 kilowatt hour battery, Renault claims that this car can achieve over 200 kilometers on one charge. With an onboard 7.4 kilowatt charger for AC charging, with an optional, and this is where this car is coming from by the way, a lot of optional extras you can add on to it, an optional DC charging option. So being built to a dollar value, that means that what you get is actually like a tiny, tiny 33 kilowatt motor, and they'll be like really slow at light, so don't try to drag people off on this car, nope. And well, if you're in traffic and you're thinking you might be able to overtake somebody, don't. <laughs> I think you'll be like, you gotta, you gotta wind up the rubber band, you know, and then it might actually go. So, Renault describes this car as being like simple, reliable, and affordable. And that's the important thing here, folks, because translated from euros to like Australian dollars, or as my friend likes to say, one million dollars. That's after taxes. Well, it could actually realistically bring EVs to the mainstream because look, most people in Australia, they buy cars between twenty and $30,000. And this is only a little stretch above that. And when you take away the um, service costs, the cheaper running costs, uh, lower fuel bill, this I think would do extremely well, even though like in this country of ours where we do have massive distances between places, I still actually think that for the majority of people who live in Australia, we live close to cities, most of us. So, mm, well done, Renault, keep it coming, and yeah, don't wait too long to bring it down under. And well, just one last little bonus story, and well, finally, Elon, he's confirmed when we'll start actually seeing these new battery cells, stating on Twitter that, 4680 cell with structural battery pack and front and rear single piece castings. Also a new paint system. Lots of new technology will happen in Berlin, which means significant production risk. Fremont and Shanghai will transition in approximately two years when the new tech is proven. Now, the Giga Berlin, which is due for completion in under a year, will be like up and at full production by the second half of 2021. So, in line with Tesla's announcement on batch day that the Model S Plaid will also be available in late 2021, we now find that this move is actually very interesting. Uh, as early as maybe April, May or next year, I'm guessing that people will actually start delaying the purchase of any new Tesla because, well, their anticipation that these might not just be in those cars, but maybe all the Tesla's cars, right? Known as the Osborne effect, this phenomenon describes a negative outcome from a company prematurely releasing information about future products and impacting sales of their current lineup. So, what do you think? If you knew that look, around the corner this was happening, would you delay your purchase? I probably would. All right, well, that brings us to the end of another episode. And if you watched it this far, thank you. Thank you for watching. If you haven't, have you not already, like, subscribe. It would really help the channel. Smash that little like button. Leave me a little comment. If you want to go to the next level, think about joining these awesome patrons over here where you get, like, the early access, polls, news, stuff that you just don't get here on YouTube. And if you, if you can afford like a coffee per month, 
that, that's as cheap as it gets. Like it, it goes up from there, I get it. And look, these awesome guys over here, my producer level, that's like Ashley Hill, uh, Nigel Farrier, and Tessa Nagong. Thank you to you guys, and but also all the other guys and girls over there on Patreon who support this channel. And you know, uh, producing something like this, um, you know, I, I want to give you the best experience you can. And yeah, it's uh, it's it, it takes a little bit of this <laughs> anyway. All right, I've been rambling on too long. You be good and you be great.